And so, unfortunately, uncertain times continue. And if we think things are soon going to be better, we are probably not realistic. Uncertainty is the common condition of all mankind these days. Most perceive the ambiguity we face as a threat, and our natural reaction in the face of threats is fight or flight. Unfortunately, both of these are counterfeits of what we should actually do. Knowing that these counterfeit behaviors are natural defaults, however, can be a great advantage to leaders as we work with others. By recognizing that our people are becoming either increasingly contentious or are retreating into isolation, we can see these behaviors as a signal to intervene in positive ways. When it's clear that these counterfeits are emerging with those whom we lead, consider having a one-to-one -one or roundtable discussion of the following strategies. Instead of resisting our uncertainties through violence or silence, which is another version of fight or flight, leaders should suggest that we should practice acceptance. Author Christine Carter has recently written that acceptance is about meeting life where it is and moving forward from there. The serenity prayer, often shared by Alcoholics Anonymous, provides additional illumination here. It states, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. Another idea, encourage your people to invest time and energy in staying physically, mentally, and emotionally healthy. Help them recognize that they must take care of themselves if they are to work through these challenging times. While that necessarily includes the wearing of masks and social distancing for the time being, more fundamentally, it means that we should encourage them to get adequate rest, exercise, nutrition, and wholesome recreation. With regard to the last item, I love the root of the word recreation. Recreate is that root, and it's an exceptionally important concept in these stressful times. We should each ask ourselves, how do I best recreate myself when I'm tired, overwhelmed, or sad? When those answers emerge, we as leaders should strive to facilitate those activities to the best of our ability to do so. Another idea for you here. Initiate discussion addressing the fears of your people while making sure to work with them to discover optimistic scenarios that look beyond the stresses of the current situation. Of course, consideration of worst case possibilities often leads to disaster mitigation, but active imagination of best case scenarios can be the launch pad for future success. Another idea for you, suggest that we strive to stay in the present to control that which is immediately in front of us, rather than worry about what might happen. Fears of the future can calcify us in place, often fulfilling our worst fears. Help your people understand that they are not powerless in spite of our uncertain times. Be emphatic and confident that they are capable of solving their own problems. While you may offer them your support, recognize that rescuing them may well prove to enable their feelings of powerlessness rather than save them from their angst. Another idea, encourage your people to find meaning in the chaos we face. How can they become even more significant in their service to others? How can they increase their contribution to the value proposition of your organization? And then help them refocus their attention from their personal stresses to those things that are stressing others. This type of outward focus has not only been the source of great compassionate service, it has also provided the seeds of new and exciting business ventures. Like our people, we as leaders prefer days of low stress, little ambiguity, and continual sunshine. However, much as muscle is strengthened, far more from resistance than from complacency, we are tested, tried, and proven by hard times. Today is certainly a proving ground for each of us. It is also an extraordinary opportunity to lead effectively. Thank you.